Hey guys, Wednesday design video, they're back. So I wanted to share a couple with you. You've got this great house, great client in California that wants a gambrelled roof, barn, and kind of new home. So it's a new old house and great inspiration, great design ideas. In fact, the gambrelled roof is one of my favorites. So they're charming, they, they just look great, and it's a completely American thing. So fun thing today, I'm gonna to dig into it. Let me know what you think. Change a few things up, really a bunch of details. Let me know what you think. What you're looking at is a consulting job I'm doing where I'm trying to fix a gambrel roof. Now you don't really see it on the front side, but you definitely see it on the, on the side over here. And what they've done is every little roof in, the, in this thing is a gambrel roof. And so you end up with a lot of gambrel roofs on the side and the addition, okay? The other thing is, is that the barn was even a gambrel roof. The gambrel roof was a roof that was cheap and inexpensive, okay? And they were, you know, New Jersey is where a lot of them come from. But you end up having this, this, this double pitch in your, in your gable end, okay? And so you've got one pitch here, and then you've got a second pitch, right, that goes down. And so, and so the thought is, is that what happened is that there was a single-story house with this kind of roof. And then to make room upstairs, the, this, this, you know, second gable went in that allowed room up here for people to live in. So... It, it, architecturally, it's, it's, it's great because it's an American style. It can't be everywhere. And so the problem with this story, the problem with this house is that because every roof is a gambrel, it you know just lessens the impact that this main house can have. And so what I've done is, and you'll see it here, is uh, I've taken this, you know, I'm working on this, this form here of their gambrel roof. And you can kind of see the lines underneath it and I've, I've increased the pitch up here because I think without this, what happens is if, if I just point out this one, this is, ends up being very flat, okay? And the other thing that happens with a gambrel roof is that there's oftentimes an overhang, okay? And so with this style, there's oftentimes a swoop that happens, okay? With this style, there's oftentimes a swoop that happens right here at the end, okay, that protects the house from the weather. So there's this there's this swoop back here, and you know it's it's common to the style, right? And so what I've done, what you see me working on in here, is increasing the impact of this gable end, right? By raising our pitch here, I've also created a break right there where the two peaks come together. I've created a, a point where it comes down, and then there's a five or six inch fascia before this one comes down. The other thing is I've, I've got that raised up. The old pitch was there. I've raised that to make this gable end more dramatic. I've kicked it out and given us a swoop down here that's gonna tie into the main part of the house and of course your, your dormers. Notice I've changed this, okay? That old roof came out to here because of that overhang, right? And so it ended up it being, a, it being kind of goofy looking for the size that it was. And so I've gone back with a more traditional gable end that would have been appropriate here because the story is, is that they didn't need space over here. They needed space and they changed the pitch and everything there. They didn't here, so you wouldn't have a gambrel. It also, I think, makes this more impactful. The other thing that happened on the barn is that it was a really long structure and you can see me working out these details, but by going with this kind of central piece that then has these wings, right? We have, you know, original barn, an addition. Notice the garage doors are different. This is gonna be a carriage house, garage doors, and these can be barned up or not, but this is their garage. But it was such a long building before, by creating this center piece, it really helps the balance and everything else. And again, now this gable end and the main house is really more impactful. Same thing on this side, I've, played around with different materials in the gable end. I've got our swoop going out. Notice what I've done too is, is this whole house has been rendered with brick. You know, really in that traditional sense, stone was a more appropriate material. So I've played around with, you know, going back with siding on some of these lesser buildings and going with stone on the main body, maybe doing a gate, the upper part of this thing in, in a, a shingle or, or a siding. Look to how I fixed the, the porch. I was talking in one of my other videos about the engaged pilaster. So if the edge of our wall is here, okay, they've got one, two, three, four, 
column. We don't have this, 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 this fifth column in here, but really if you look at this spacing, right, that, I, that I'm drawing in here, there, there's no organization to this thing because what, what should happen, and you'll see that I've played around with it, is that the doors and windows should be in the middle of these columns. And so I've now, I've got four, four things which creates the, that, those three spaces just like that other one. And I'm trying to move the doors around things so that it creates visual balance, visual harmony, right? And then uh, I've changed, notice that this upper balustrade is not in line with the posts. And so you've got these posts coming along here and this railing, you know, set into, you know, three, four sections there, but these should line up. So my column should line up with the pedestal there. And you'll see that underneath each column is a little pedestal, right? With the, with the different size balustrade in between, but this organizes this porch thing and makes it much better. And then finally, you'll see on the front, that I played with this entrance. Now they were inspired actually by a house in Fort Worth that was a really pretty gambrel roof in an historic neighborhood that had this kind of hooded front. But uh, the problem is it gets so big on, a, on this two-story house that these parts kind of overwhelm it. And so what I've done is I've kind of changed and played around with how you did this entry as well as the balustrade up here because this is kind of sunk in on the second floor. I've changed the windows. They have these double hung windows with transoms. But what's happening is, and I've talked about these window sizes before, but that window pane there ends up being kind of a square. And you really want your window panes to be, you know, vertical, creating this visual height. So I've taken out that those transoms. These windows are too small to really have a transom. And I've just made them a six over one, which is a nice period, 1920s window. And then because of that, because I've taken that out, it creates more visual height than there. And then finally, I've worked on that entry. And what basically what I did is I sketched up an example of what, what I'm hoping that's going to look like, where I've got my column, you know, I got a little uh, architrave, a frieze, my cornice, and then that split fillet where this will rise up over top of it. Now, that's going to be you know, a harder thing to build, but it's a, but it's an arch. So it should self-support. This should be a, like a, a copper pan or a, a raised seam roof. So it's not going to be very heavy. This is in California. So there's going to be no snow. So this could actually be built with this arch over top. And what I'm encouraging instead of the brick is like a stucco, stucco look over top of it. And then with stone accents, right? That it was popular in the twenties. And maybe on the corners, maybe around a window, you get some stone accents, but then stucco is in, in these other areas. And as you go to outbuildings, you end up with siding or something else. You'll notice I fixed this area here. I've added pilasters. I've fixed the balustrade so that whole composition kind of comes together and works better. And so I have uh, done a three-part thing, smaller windows, bigger windows here to kind of give it that classical balance large pedestals, intermediary posts that sit up over the, the mullions there. And so panels underneath, right? Just a little bit better way of organizing this so that kind of this comes together and looks real pretty. But I'm real happy with this so far, working with this great client and um, kind of some fun details we're still trying to work out as far as the balustrade, but uh, so far so good working on a great kind of a new old house. Okay guys, do you like the fact that I pulled away all those gambrels, right? There's just too many. Change that, that garage, I really like that. It came together really nice. And now that's telling a much better story when you drive up. It, it looks like something that, that's come from a different time. We've got a lot of work with materiality. What, what, is gonna, what is it gonna look like? We've got maybe a Ludoichi roof. And so we're playing with some of those materials from the turn of the century to try to charm up this house. It's really a great design. So I'm excited. If we can get the details right, it's gonna be great. Let me know what you guys think. I'm Brent Hull, thanks for watching.